Mirror Demons. It was a usual day for me. I woke up, brushed my teeth, had breakfast, went to school and then came home again. But then it happened. I was doing homework in my room, the only sound being the tip-tapping of the keys on my laptop. It was late at night, therefore the rest of my family were asleep. I checked the clock in the far corner of the room. It was 10.30 p.m. exactly. I brightened the lamp next to my bed on my bedside table and tiptoed over to the rusty mirror that sat facing the wall. I had always been afraid of mirrors at night, so I turned them over when it started to get dark. I had every right to be afraid. I flipped the mirror over and stared at my reflection. I thought something was off, so I leaned closer until my nose was almost touching the mirror. I stayed there for a while until I finally drew back. In the mirror, my lips started to curl at the sides into a smile, so I reached my hand up to my mouth. That's when I realized that I wasn't smiling. Only my reflection was. My reflection's smile grew into a demonic, almost manic smile. I touched the mirror, fear filling my body. Then it all went black. I awoke, my reflection still grinning. It was holding a knife. What are you? I asked, terror spreading throughout my tone. <laughs> Have you forgotten? It spoke. I am your darkest thoughts. The thoughts that keep you awake at night. All those people in insane asylums are reflections that have escaped, trapped the sanity within you inside the mirror. Just like you now. I looked around and realized I was on the wrong side of the mirror. I was the reflection now. <sighs> and my darkest thoughts were free. Thanks for releasing me. I'll have fun on this side. It smirked and licked the blade of a knife. And with that, it disappeared, leaving me trapped as a reflection. All I could do was listen to the screams and cries of pain of my family echo throughout my house. <laughs> Never trust your reflection. I am 26 years old, a male from a strong Christian family. I was raised in a non-denominational church background which never really focused on the idea of demons being present at all times, which is taught more heavily in other denominations, such as Catholicism. I had heard of them, of course, only some little jerks who danced around Satan to provide him company in hell. My experience started out just as another week at church camp during the summer before my sixth grade. This was one of those overnight camps that had all the trimmings, from horseback riding, paintball, water games, including the infamous blob, and massive campfires every night where we would sing church songs and bond with other groups each night. This was my third year in a row coming to this camp, and as a soon-to-be middle school kid, 
we had the privilege of staying in the group cabins. In the previous years, I was constrained to what looked like a massive teepee or tent that could fit around ten bunk beds. Those were the worst, as there was no protection from the plethora of insects I would find all over my bunk right before I fell asleep. This year, though, was different with the cabins. They had working lights, air conditioning units, and the bathrooms even had hot water in the showers. I remember thinking to myself around the third or fourth day that I wanted to come back for the full summer the next year, as that was an option. What happened on the second to last night, though, changed my opinion, and really my life. There was nothing out of the ordinary about this night. It was just a regular summer night, and my group of around 15 to 20 5 and 6 graders had just finished our routine campfire and gone to bed. We never told ghost stories, as this was a Christian camp after all, like I said, so there was nothing for my mind to fear as I fell asleep. I remember the next moments as crystal clear as the day it happened, well over a decade ago. I don't know what woke me, but it wasn't a noise or the urge to go to the bathroom or anything like that. It was pitch black in the cabin, with barely the moonlight peeking through the curtains of the windows. I remember waving my hand in front of me and could just faintly make out the silhouette of my fingers. I was still very tired, and I knew I could drift back to sleep easily by closing my eyes again, but something made me glance over toward the door of the cabin. Beside the door, I saw what looked like the shadow of a man, probably around six feet tall, with no discernible features about him. He didn't move at all, but I could tell he was looking right at me, even though there was no face to look with. The shadow was darker than the already pitch black room. I could literally see an outline of darkness against the wall, like a reversed flashlight. The funny thing is, I fell right back to sleep. I didn't freak out or anything. Heck, I didn't even give it more than a second of thought the next morning. I don't know if I hid that memory deep in my mind or if I truly couldn't comprehend what I had seen the night before. It wasn't until we were heading back to the cabin from the bathrooms the next night when I heard some kids outside the cabin next to us talking about a demon their counselor had seen the night before. I walked over and found the counselor, who was probably high school aged, and asked him to describe what happened. He started to tell me the exact situation that I had just encountered the night before, but his went a little different. He woke up and saw a shadow of a man darker than the pitch black, staring at him with no discernible features, just like I had. He knew instantly, though, that this was a demon. He began to pray to God for protection and the expulsion of the demon from his cabin. During his prayer, he mentioned the name of Jesus and then saw a surge of bright light appear and the demon was gone. No one else in the cabin saw a thing. I lost it. I became inconsolable at the realization that I had just witnessed an actual demon the night before, but I never did anything to get rid of it. Every fear-driven question that could possibly be recreated was swimming in my head. Was it still around? Would I see it again that night? Could I get rid of it if I did see it? I just could not understand how a demon was in a church camp. I figured churches and places like this were sacred ground. How could a demon find its way in? My counselors were very understanding of my distressed state and did everything they could to make me feel better. My counselor kept the bunk below mine and I called his name to check if he was awake every fifteen minutes that night. Neither of us slept but I felt that it was better than waking up face to face, alone with a demon. I made it home fine the following day and never told my parents about that situation, as I knew they would probably think it was just my overactive imagination. I have done research as I've grown older, 
and found that if anything, churches and church events are more prone to demon encounters. Demons want to do anything to prevent you from getting closer with God, so I'm assuming that since I was young, an impressionable child who was still figuring out things with religion, I was a prime target. I've found that I've grown stronger in faith due to the encounter. I still wake up in the middle of the night, though, and think that I might glance toward the door of my room to see that same dark shadow. But I feel more prepared now if I do. Demon in the Window Before you read any further, I want you to know that I have not hyped up or altered any of what you are about to read. I am not easily scared myself, and what happened to me frightened me more than I have been in a long time. That being said, you might feel the same way after you read this. The information, locations, and dates have not been changed in any way. It is important for you to know that I have been involved in ghost hunting for many years. I run tours at haunted locations for newbie ghost hunters and thrill seekers. Prior to the investigation, we have a short Q&A session. At these functions, it's almost a guarantee that someone will ask me if a ghost can follow them home. I used to say something along the lines of, I don't see why not. They can be bound to certain areas, but many spirits come and go as they please, and you probably shouldn't worry yourself. One night after an investigation of a Swansea, Massachusetts residence, I changed the way I felt about that answer. The investigation was conducted as normal, and after we were done, the equipment was broke down packed into the van and off we went. While driving back to Cranston, Rhode Island, to where our cars were parked, we discussed how we felt the night went. Nobody had eerie feelings. We all agreed that it felt quiet, and we could only base any further conclusions after what we could find in our evidence review. It was shortly after 1 a.m. when I got to my house in Attleboro, as soon as I walked through the door, I put the equipment case at the base of the stairs to my room and climbed into bed. I then proceeded to have the worst nightmare I'd ever had. The dream happened like this. I was alone. It was dark at night with a clear sky and the moon and stars were visible. Although I had no light to use, I could still see what was ahead of me. I was in a labyrinth of some sort, walking deeper and deeper into the winding pathways. The labyrinth had tall, overbearing walls with small glass windows just big enough to see through. Every time I would look at the windows, a skeletal face would stare back at me on the other side. It was like the walls were hollow and something was following me inside of them. My heart would race if I looked at the windows, so I kept my eyes forward and focused on the maze. I finally came to the center of the labyrinth. There was an oval-shaped tomb-like building with a barred door on the front with two separate keyholes. Subconsciously, I reached into my pocket and pulled out a key. As I looked at the key, a hissing whisper came about in the background of the dream, saying, This key has one purpose. This key can unlock the door. I put the key into the first hole and unlocked the door. As I opened the door, it was dark, but there was a faint glow of orange light that I could see from the top of the spiral stairway. As I began down the stairs, I encountered this cloaked, starved, skeletal monster. Its skin was stretched tightly across its face. It had a very small patch of long, straggly hair as it held up a lamp close to its face. 
I could see more clearly. Its eyes were fixed on me, and it smiled, revealing a few blackened teeth. At this point I ran back to the door. I tried to lock it, but the key suddenly wouldn't work. I remembered it saying that the key could only unlock the door. I started to trace my way back through the maze. Its voice became louder in the background as I had unleashed it from its tomb. I can't remember what was being said because I was running for my life. I finally came to the exit of the maze. There was a short road that I followed that came to the driveway of a large mansion. I thought I was safe for a second, and as I started toward the house, the figure appeared again at the front of the mansion gate. It held up its hand like a puppeteer would and conjured two large black dogs. They chased me through the yard and I climbed a fence to get away from them. On the other side of the fence, I ended up in some neighborhood that felt familiar, but there was no one in any of the houses. I entered a coffee shop and sat down at a table. There was a loud banging on the windows of the shop The banging became increasingly louder until I closed my ears, and at that moment I woke up. Unaware and confused for a moment, I collected myself. Then I heard banging. I thought I was still dreaming. Unluckily, this was reality. All of the hinged windows to my room were open. It is impossible to open these windows from the outside. There is a lock mechanism that goes through the top of the window and into the wall, which then has a sliding lock bolt come through the side of that mechanism to keep the window from moving completely. Still slightly shocked, I closed all of the windows, then grabbed my digital voice recorder and hit record. I put the recorder on the edge of my bed and went upstairs to see if any more windows were open. None of them were. Upon returning to my room, I listened back to the recorder. While I was upstairs, I captured something or someone banging on the window. It could not get it open this time, and with a frustrated hissing whisper it said, Damn you. The same voice from my dream. It was the voice of that monster or demon from the tomb. Whatever was behind that door that I opened was in my room that night. It made its presence known. Since then, there has been no sign of it here. I heard its voice. I have drawn its face. I will not forget what happened. You may choose to believe this or not. It's up to you. But from now on, I caution everyone. If you dabble with spirits, you need strong willpower. They can come into your life, and when they do, it can be terribly frightening. My Encounter with a Demon by some guy 2930 When I was 14, I had a strange encounter that still puzzles me to this day. On the weekends, I'd sometimes go to my mother's place. My parents are divorced. The house she lived in was converted into several small apartments, and it was a creepy old farmhouse. The house was at least 150 maybe 200 years old. My mom told me off and on of strange sounds she'd been hearing and seeing things in the corner of her eyes, feelings of being watched. This one particular evening when I spent the night, I brought my N64 because my mom would go to bed early and I'd still be up for a few more hours. I remember to this day what game I was playing, WWF No Mercy. I was sitting Indian style on the floor playing the story mode. I had just finished a mission in the game and set down the controller to the left of me 
behind me. Directly behind me was a recliner. I'll never forget what I saw next. I went to grab the controller and saw what appeared to be a hoof, like a horse next to the controller on the floor. Insects and blood was coming out of the sliver that separated the hoof. I thought to myself, how strange. I slowly glanced up, and this demonic figure was staring back at me. It leaned down toward me. Its face got down in my face and grinned the most evil of smiles. The eyes black and full of rage and hatred, face red, one winged creature. Blood was dripping from its teeth as it grinned. My heart sank with fear. It was so surreal I immediately went into panic and blacked out. I later learned it was the fright or flight response. Several seconds later I came to, lying on the floor, and I could barely move. The demonic figure was sitting in the chair laughing at me. It was as if my fear and energy had been sucked dry from me. I lost all strength, shaking uncontrollably from fear. I did all I could to crawl to my mom's room while clenching my chest. I looked over my shoulder, seeing it laughing at me. I was deeply terrified. Words cannot describe it. When finally reaching my mother's room, I tried talking but couldn't speak. I laid on the floor next to my mom's bed for what seemed like an eternity. I couldn't stand up or speak, shaking uncontrollably with fear. After a lengthy period of time, I'm assuming twenty or thirty minutes before I regained my strength to talk and stand up. I finally managed to wake her up and we talked and she believed me, thank God. She told me that she and her boyfriend had seen the same thing weeks before but didn't want to scare me. <laughs> I don't know what to make of it and I still think of it to this day. I have no doubt that demons and angels are real and believe me, the last thing you ever want to encounter is coming face to face with a demon smiling in your face. I don't care if you don't believe me, but when three people see the same thing on two separate occasions, either we're all crazy or something was wrong with that old farmhouse. My mom has moved and we haven't encountered that thing again. My mother and I occasionally talk about what we experienced. This was the first time in my life I experienced a panic attack and since have been in and out of therapy for years due to my daily anxiety issues. Most of the counselors I've seen come to the conclusion that I have PTSD stemming from some traumatic incident when I was younger. I haven't told them that this event was sparked due to my fear of them having me blue papered and deemed insane. I never had anxiety attacks or suffered panic problems before. Thankfully though, I haven't encountered something like that since. <laughs>